am debrief. I'm David Coombe. It's uh, uh, the 22nd of July here, Thursday uh, morning. Uh, running a little bit behind schedule here uh, due to some technical uh, issues uh, getting this uh, video uh, loaded up. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, overnight um, in the US we had uh, Bernanke come out and uh, uh, indicate that the US economy's uh, outlook is, is not all that rosy, so uh, that was pretty gloomy uh, sort of stuff, and uh, the market responded accordingly with the Dow down uh, something over 1%, so we'll uh, just bring that up here, uh, to be down 109 points, in fact, uh, with the S&P 500 down 13, uh, slightly more at 1.8% down and the NASDAQ more so down 1.58%. Uh, over in Europe, uh, it, was a, it was a better picture, um, with the FTSE up 1.46%, and the CAC up three quarters of a percent, the DAX up 038 and uh, I guess uh, we'll be focusing on the, uh, the banking stress test, uh, which is uh, really keeping things moving pretty much sideways here, just to, trading up and down, up and down, lacking really clear direction. Um, the other thing I guess to uh, be mindful of is the conclusion of the earnings season out of the US before we uh, we really expect to see anything significant there. Um, so let's have a look now a little bit further down the page here and see what uh, where we're at rather with our local indices. Uh, the Nikkei is currently down 60, the Hang Seng's up 325, and our SPY is off 17 points. We'll take a look over here at where some of our commodities are at. And crude's at 76.54, which is down uh, 2 cents. Uh, Coca's at 2935, which is down 42. Corn, 393 down 0.5, cotton at 73.93, down 0.92, oats at 262 and a quarter, up 1.75, and rough rice looking okay here at $10.06, uh, which is up 0.8 cents per cubic weight. Soy at 990, uh, sorry, 977 and three quarters, which is down three quarters of a cent, and moving down the page, Wool at 935 cents a kilo, down 11 cents. Copper at 306, so it seems to be holding this $3 level here. Uh, 306 cents, 0.55, down 2.75 cents. And gold at 1185.60, silver at 17.65. And over to our currencies now, euro is trading largely even, buying two. Uh, sorry, 1.2754 US dollars. Currently buying, or the pound rather, is buying 1.5180 US dollars. And US dollars buying 86.72 cents, a uh, yen rather. Uh, Aussie's trading at 87.60. And the Canadian dollar is at 1.0491. And the US dollar is buying 1.0495 Swiss francs. Take a look now at our Falcon Trader and uh, get a bit of a feel for what's uh, what's happening here at the local index. I think I mentioned that probably going to see uh, a bit more lack of direction here until uh, some of these things are out of the way. But certainly maintain the view that uh, just under 4,200 is our support. And all the way up at 5,000, seems like a long time ago now, is uh, is our topside resistance. Um, not too much to look at here. It seemed to be forming some sort of a vaguely pennant-shaped uh, pattern here. So um, maybe, just maybe, we'll see some strong movements so uh, one side or the other in, um, in coming trading sessions. Have a look at something we've been looking at over the previous morning debrief sessions and that's BP and it appears that, that capping and the continuation of the cap to hold 
seen it push up here above or at 400 pence per share. So I think if that holds there, it may want to start moving up towards that 40, uh, 450 pence level rather and possibly even look to fill that gap in the middle at some time, but uh, I guess we'll, uh, time will tell. Um, I know that John has been talking about corn here, so we'll give that a quick look. Uh, that's the daily here. He's pretty bullish on this. And um, yeah, it's clearly a break to that, up that uh, you know, downward trend line. Could be quite significant. And moving on to soy, which is another one he's been watching at uh, 1,012.62 here. Clearly we've had that breach here and uh, perhaps we'll get a little bit more consolidation here before hopefully moving higher. Rough price for the people that have taken the rough price warrant. Starting to form a, or form a reasonably good basing pattern here to my eye and uh, hopefully uh, with some of these weather events panning out, we'll get some good support there and uh, we'll see that move to the north side. And that's the daily price action there, so starting to build up quite nicely there. Let's take a look now at what's happening with gold. And I think we've, we might have mentioned again in previous sessions that we've got this trend line here that goes back right back to uh, when and it was trading at last trading $700, getting very close to breaking that uh, that level here. So I guess for people that are long gold, they may want to keep a, a watchful eye on what's going on here, and uh, certainly a break below that inner upward trend line could be significant. If it does hold and bounce here, <clears throat> then um, yeah, we could expect, I think, uh, conservatively to be looking at retesting that 1250 level pretty quickly. Now to silver, I think a pullback to this inner upward channel trend line could be a good opportunity to get long, but obviously we want to be mindful of what's going on with gold at the same time. Uh, that probably wraps it up for the Falcon Trader here. So um, let's finish up with the economic calendar, uh, the data that we can expect out today. So most of today's data is considered to be of medium significance. And uh, first up, we have at 1 p.m. local time, New Zealand ANZ Consumer Confidence month on month and index for July. Uh, then moving into British retail sales month on month and year on year. We've got our uh, forecast prices here in this middle column, which are anticipated to be higher on the month on month level, but down on the year on year level. So that's the previous figure, the 3.4, and the, uh, the forecast, the 2.4. No great surprises there, I guess. Moving into later this evening at 10.30, we've got Canadian retail sales data month on month, which uh, was down 2% previously. It was expected to be up 0.5%. And uh, less automobile sales. We had a similar uh, uh, kind of ratio there. And I guess that sort of um, number would be expected. And certainly, if we look back on uh, Tuesday's rates decision out of the out of Canada, we had an expectation that they would be raising the rates by a quarter of a percent, 0.75, from half a percent. So that about wraps up the AM debrief. Once again, apologies for the late start here, <coughs> and uh, thanks again, as always, for your attention. Bye for now.